The other day, we all saw another tragedy happen in our country, a mass shooting in Florida. And I'm not going to say anything to the victims or to their families because too many people think saying condolences or thoughts and prayers is somehow going to make a difference, change things, or prevent this from happening in the future. But I can do something that I think will help, and that is to explain to you how breaking news works in situations like this and why conspiracy theories start to bubble up whenever something like this happens. Because sure enough now, we are seeing a video go relatively viral showing a woman claim that there was more than one shooter. An interview with a high school student is getting a lot of attention because she claims to have had a close encounter with the shooter in Florida. And another video shows a student claiming that there were at least two shooters. Before I get into all of that, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, all of you guys. If you haven't already, go to patreon.com forward slash TimCast and become a patron today. There are several different tiers to choose from, most notably is tier one. At $10 per month, you get access to behind the scenes photos and videos, bonus videos and commentary. And when you support me on Patreon, you help me do the work that I do. So please consider becoming a patron at whatever level you feel comfortable today. The first story we have is from metro.co.uk. It says, teenagers hauntingly calm encounter with Nicholas Cruz during Valentine's Day massacre. And this is by Zoe Druid. In the aftermath of the killings, student Alexa Meidnik, a senior at the school, realized she had an incredibly close encounter with Cruz in the seconds after the shooting took place. She even joked, I'm surprised you weren't the one who did it, as she fled the building alongside the suspected killer. She said she believed there were two shooters involved because the shots she thought she heard were coming from a different part of the school building. U.S. media have since reported there was just a single gunman involved in Wednesday afternoon's atrocity. We also have a similar story from Inquisitor. Alexa Meidnik said she talked to Nicholas Cruz during the shooting, definitely had to be at least two shooters. Now what we have here is one witness at the school who's claiming that she heard gunshots while she was with Nicholas Cruz, therefore she thinks there must have been two shooters. But let's take a look at what she actually says. Weren't you scared? Um, in the moment I wasn't because there was obviously definitely another shooter involved, but... Oh, you think he was not the only one? No, definitely not. Why do you say that? Um because when shots were fired, I saw him after the fact. So, and the shots were coming from the other part of the building. So there definitely had to be two shooters involved, I believe. That's the first I've heard of that. Did you see any other students who were wounded? Um, no, sir. This video is from Matt Musel. And Matt is a sportscaster in Houston, Texas, it appears, but he is a verified Twitter user which is lending a lot of credibility to the video, and certainly a lot of people are believing that this must have some merit. Now, this isn't the only video of a student at the school in Florida claiming there were two shooters. There's actually another one going around. Tell me your first and last name. Uh, I'm Kenneth Anthony. Okay, uh, and tell me what you were just telling um, me. You're I a just, student there at Parkland Douglas, Yeah, right? there's a, yes, I'm a student what at What grade? Um, I'm in 10th grade, I'm a sophomore. Okay, um, tell me. So uh, apparently there's this kid Nicholas Cruz and Jared OTC. He shot up the he shot up the school. Uh, you said yeah. there were two shooters. Yeah, at least two, definitely. Nicholas Cruz apparently was shot Sorry and killed. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to go. Now here we have another student from the school claiming there were two shooters. A lot of people are sharing these videos saying that these are witnesses. And if the witnesses are saying they heard gunshots and they saw Nicholas Cruz, then there must be two shooters, right? Well, maybe not. Let's scrutinize this video just a little bit. According to the New York Times, Mr. Cruz 19 was booked into jail in Broward County. The authorities released a mugshot of him staring wide-eyed into the camera. Now in that video we just watched, the student says Nicholas Cruz was shot and killed. But according to the New York Times and a mugshot of Nicholas Cruz, he was booked into Broward County. So if we're going to trust the New York Times on this one, and I gotta say, I'm gonna trust the New York Times over a kid who heard something outside of his school, it seems like certainly Mr. Cruz is still alive and the student was wrong. This is what happens whenever breaking news stories emerge. People hear rumors, rumors get circulated online, get reported as fact, and people get confused. So why would I doubt the student, Alexa Meidnik, when she says she heard gunshots? Well, I have experience on the ground in places where guns have been fired. 
where riot weapons have been fired. And I can tell you that two things tend to happen. In some instances where people don't expect gunshots, they don't recognize the sound as gunshots, and they say, what is that? Or they call it fireworks. In one instance, I was in Ferguson, and gunshots went off, actual gunshots. And sure enough, several journalists just looked around at each other and said, are those fireworks? Because the average person does not know what a gun sounds like. They're too used to movies, and movie gunshots sound very different from actual gunshots. Another thing might happen too. When people are expecting gunshots, they think everything might be a gunshot. And this happens in riot situations where someone might drop something, a car door might get slammed, and people will start running for no reason in a random direction. So when I hear that one witness claims that she was walking with Nicholas Cruz, I think that's likely. We know that Nicholas Cruz was trying to flee the building by blending in with students, and this according to many news sources. But when she says she heard gunshots on the other side of the building, we don't know what she heard. She thinks they were gunshots, but this is not definitive. Now, it would seem that the first part of her story may be true because according to many sources, here we have Fox News, Cruz later concealed himself in the crowd of students and teachers running out of the high school, authority said. He was soon taken into custody without a fight. And there is something here that leads me to believe that he was likely the shooter. It's rather simple. He was expelled. According to the New York Times, Nicholas Cruz, Florida shooting suspect, was expelled from the school. So keep in mind, if people are fleeing from a building and one of those people doesn't belong there, they're certainly going to be singled out and detained. One student said he always had guns on him. The crazy stuff that he did was not right for school and he got kicked out of school multiple times for that kind of stuff. And that's not the only example of people saying that this was a weird kid, a loner who liked guns and that they were not surprised it was him. In fact, Alexa Meidnik said to him that she was surprised he wasn't the one who did it. Now, I want to make a few points about breaking news and journalism and some of the issues I take with the mainstream narrative. Journalists should challenge the government. Journalists should never just blindly trust government officials or anyone. In fact, everyone should always be a little skeptical. When it comes to big breaking news stories like this, journalists just tend to agree or believe anything they hear from law enforcement, from spokespeople, from government officials, and they should not do that. It is entirely possible there was a second shooter. In my opinion, I think that might not be the case, but it would be silly to draw conclusions a day later. Reporting following breaking news is always bad. Think about how bad news organizations get your average story. Think about how a news organization reporting on say the Oxford study has all the time in the world to do a Google search to read the study and still gets it wrong. Then think about breaking news where people are throwing rumors around and no one really knows what is happening and they start writing stories. Well, the journalists take precautions to make sure they don't say anything definitive. In the New York Times story, we see screenshots of an Instagram page said to belong to Mr. Cruz show many photos of a man holding firearms and ammunition used in a semi-automatic AR-15 rifle. One photo shows several guns, including rifles with scopes, lying on a bed. Another appears to show a frog that had been killed. But notice how it says, said to belong. This is because the New York Times doesn't definitively know if this is his page, but they want to roll with this anyway. And in my opinion, they should not do this. It's kind of bad reporting. Take this into consideration and realize that everybody is doing this. Every news organization is trying to jump on the story and they tend to just side with the mainstream narrative. Journalists need to challenge the narrative and be skeptical. It doesn't mean that you doubt everything the government is saying, but it means you should at least a little bit. I don't know what happened, and I think it would be naive for anybody to say that they have a definitive answer as to what actually happened. As time goes on, we're going to learn more, and then we'll probably get a better picture of what happened. If it comes down to me having to choose between a high school student who thinks she heard some gunshots and a student standing outside of school saying he thinks there are two shooters, I'm going to side with the official narrative on this one. It doesn't mean that I believe everything they say, just that I'm going to lean more in that direction because we're trying to figure out what happened and some things are more probable than others. In situations like this, it's more likely, in my opinion, that law enforcement will have a better peg on what's happening. They're going to withhold information that is incomplete and they're going to report what they think they can, what they think they know definitively. Keep in mind, they will also withhold things if it would damage the department or local government there's a lot of things they are likely to withhold. The main point of this video is to make sure everyone recognizes that news organizations are not perfect. 
and neither are high school students. Whenever a big story like this happens, witnesses tend to get things wrong because they don't understand what's happening and everyone's kind of panicked. So I hope you all keep that in mind, but let me know what you think in the comments below because, hey look, it's entirely possible there were two shooters. I don't know. In my opinion, I don't think it to be the case and I tend to lean more towards the official narrative. But there's always room for doubt and a good journalist is going to have at least a little bit. So again, comment below, let me know what you think. We'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast for more breaking news from around the world and stay tuned. I will see you all tomorrow at 4.